In sorting through the media mess that frankly is the 2023 AFL trade period, I'm noticing a lot of fans and media alike are agreeing with the fact that Richmond are just going to be blatantly bad in 2024, whether it's someone like a Josh Jenkins claiming that they are going to finish on the bottom of the ladder, to a couple of you guys even commenting on my 2024 predictions post stating that Richmond are going to be one of the worst teams in the competition next year. And I thought putting these couple things together would be a good case study to talk about. Are Richmond really going to be bad in 2024? The reasons why they could be, the reasons why they might not be, and everything in between. And that is what this video is about, considering that there is still so much more trade and draft stuff to go down in the next week. So... Let's talk about the Tigers. They've got a new coach, some veterans are out the door, and stock on the Tigers is as low a price as it's been since the end of the 2016 season. And we know what happened after that. So let's talk about the Tigers. If you do want to join an NBA Fantasy League, the link will be the pinned comment down below. Still a few spots left and the draft is next week. So if you want to jump on, please do so. It's going to be a lot of fun. The NFL League is going to be a whole lot of fun. I'm currently 10th out of 12, but I am only two wins, which can be one week off fourth spot. So it's a lot of fun and hopefully you can check out the NBA League if you want to. But let's talk about the Tigers. So... Dimmergorn, not necessarily a bad thing in my opinion. Coming from a Hawthorne supporter, although Dimmer's exit was a million times better and classier than what Clarko's exit was, was needed. Once you win multiple flags, you need to go because the refreshment of not just the list, but the coaching staff itself in order to build towards a new age of success is required. How many dynasty coaches in the modern age have stuck around and done really well. Well, Lee Matthews after 2004 didn't make the finals. Bomber left in 2010. Clarko didn't really get close after 2015. Okay, Hawthorne finished top four twice and let's be honest, were bitched by Melbourne in that semi-final and were absolutely owned by the Bulldogs in 2016. Oh, but if Isaac Smith kicks the goal after the siren, it doesn't matter. Sydney would have crushed us. It is what it is. The Hawks weren't close. And now, Richmond, their dynasty is over. Let's not get any kind of confusion here. That golden period ended three now grand finals ago. So, they need a new coach. It's not that big of a deal. Celebrate the amazing times. Path on success, hopefully. Move on. That's not that difficult to understand. It's Ironically, it's the coaches that win a flag that stick around for way too long, let alone the two or the three, which usually don't. Clarko, you could argue, but the rest, they didn't. So credit to the Tigers, credit to Dimmer. We'll see how he goes up at the Gold Coast. But in terms of this Richmond list, I feel like the Richmond... Well, not hate. I know some people are going to hate the Tigers, and you, know, you can hate whoever you want. I'm not going to stop you, but... I think the lack of faith in how Richmond go next year is kind of a good victim of natural improvement. And what I mean by that is we kind of expect other teams to get better. And we don't know just how much better Richmond are going to be. Who, yes, were just a middle side last year. Let's be honest. They were well, worse than a middle side, but a middle side nonetheless. Who didn't really look like making the eight at any stage. They should have lost the round one game to Carlton. They didn't. That's fine. But at no stage were we really thinking, oh, yeah, they're a contender. And, you know, it's really great finishing fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth in a year, getting some finals experience. But if you're not contending for the flag, you're as bad as the rest of us. That's pretty much how it works. There's only one Premiership Cup to give out. Sure, what Brisbane fans are going to feel better about themselves and their footy club than West Coast fans are. How many flags did they win this year? Zero. That's kind of the way to look at it. But Richmond's experience is taking a tumble. We know Jack is more irreplaceable on field than Koch is. Uh, the leadership, I don't want to knock Trent Koch in for that at all. He's Richmond's only ever three-time premiership captain. And one of the best captains of the modern era. That's just a fact. I don't care where you compare him to Voss, Hodge, these guys. 
I, I don't care. I don't care if you put him fourth on the list of dynasty captains. There have been about a hundred of them in the 21st century. So to be fourth out of that list, if that's where you put him, it's probably where I would put him. Like, that's still awesome. That's still in incredible. And he deserves all the plaudits in the world. But in terms of where Richmond are going to build and grow, Rewalt is the bigger loss. And how do I know that? Because Trent Cotchin's midfield time is being replaced by Shea Bolton, Tim Taranto, and Jacob Hopper. And who is replacing Jack Rewalt up forward for the Tigers next year? Jacob Kaczynski. Can you see which one would have a little bit more skepticism? Now, I do hope that Cozzy does well. I know he's been the whipping boy for the Hawks, who, let's be honest, might need to retire that number 23 jumper, but he might have cursed us, given the two after him didn't quite work out as tall players who played at both ends of the ground. Cozzy during his draft year, and early on in his career, but made an AFL name for himself up forward. And Tim O'Brien never really figured out which end of the ground he was playing at. But I have a feeling that Cozzy's going to go from the number 23 at Hawthorne to the number 8 at Richmond. And I don't know why, but that makes me smile. But do I hope he does well? Yes. Is the quality of Cozzy v Jack much, much greater than the gap between Bolton and Hopper v Cochin? Uh, yeah, Catechis a cataclysmic difference, or just a vast difference, we'll go down that path. But another reason for the Tigers is like, yeah, they could improve, but are they going to improve as much as other teams that didn't make the eight? Now, I'm huge on Adelaide, if you haven't watched a whole lot of my stuff before, I think Adelaide are going to be one of the best teams in the competition next year. I see them making the top four, I'm still not sold that they're going to win the flag, I'm not there yet, but a top four team... Absolutely, I think so. I still think Brisbane are going to be good. Carlton, Collingwood are still going to be good. But are Richmond going to improve more than an Essendon? More than a Geelong? More than a Gold Coast? You know, more than a St. Kilda, even though they played finals last year? A Sydney? You know, a Bulldogs? Once you start rolling through the teams that you think are definitely worse than Richmond, your list kind of stops at West Coast North. The rest are really objective, really objective. And that's kind of what's exciting about this 2024 season is it's really hard to predict. I still think Brisbane and Collingwood are going to be very good sides next year. And, you know, I'm high on Adelaide. I'm high on Carlton. I'm not that sold yet on Melbourne and Port Adelaide. I need to see after this trade and draft period, I suppose. But could Richmond finish third last next year? Yes. Could Richmond finish sixth next year? Yes, if everything goes well. They really could. I think one of the biggest losses is Josh Gibkiss down back. Now, that might sound silly because Richmond were the best rebounding 50 side in the competition last year and were a top four team for meters gained in the back half, which means they were able to relatively get the ball back in their back half and start scoring. Their meters gained were still up. Meters gained per disposal were relatively okay. But my God, were they getting slaughtered in the middle of the ground. And that is a real problem. And they were not using the ball that well. But clearances were abhorrent. Now, I know that a lot of top eight sides weren't necessarily massive clearance teams. But you've still got to be good. R Richmond weren't bang average. They weren't a little bit below average. They were poor. Poor, poor, poor. They were terrible at clearances last year which needs to be improved in a big way. Kicking efficiency. Now, if you look at the kicking efficiency stats, six of the top eight teams last year at kicking the footy efficiently did not make finals, which makes sense. Essendon, Hawthorne, Fremantle, these sides were just chip, chip, chipping the ball in their back half. Who were the two teams that made finals that were the best kicking teams though? Collingwood and Brisbane. Now, that could just be a coincidence to me, but kicking the ball in the forward half is going to be pretty damn important. Tom Lynch is now a footy veteran. Uh, he's not going to be picking the ball up below his knees and acting like a genetic human freak. So, what now? Again, Cozzy, I hope he can do really well, but are we putting faith in him to kick 45, 50 goals next year? Would it be nice for the Tigers? Of course it would. But the Smalls... Does Shea Bolton need to play forward for the majority of the year? Kick 40 and he and Lynch kick, hopefully for Richmond's sake, 90 plus between them? I would say yes. And I would say that Dusty Taranto plus 
extra needs to be the center bounce combination for the majority of the year. Now, can Dusty and Shea Bolton rotate? Of course they can. But Adam Uze can take a big leaf out of Adam Kingsley's book at the Giants. And what you need to do year one is take your best players, put them in their best positions, and don't mess with it yet. There is plenty of time to do that and evolve your game. But if Richmond are going to get better and they have every incentive to do so because they don't have their picks, they don't have a first or a second next year. Taranto and Hopper absorbed them. So they have no reason to faff around, if you will. Therefore, to answer the question of will Richmond stink next year, my answer is probably not. Because they can't. West Coast can. They're still rebuilding. North can, they're still rebuilding. I would argue North shouldn't next year because, my God, their under-24 group is going to look scary. But they're still kids. Hawthorne can, I would argue not as much as the other two. But they're still building. Gold Coast, you'd like to think they'd improve under Dimmer, but who knows? Essendon, Brad Scott already said last year before the season even started they were building. These clubs, it would be understandable if they weren't that good. Hawthorne and Essendon especially would be looking to improve in a big way because they're going to have the money in free agency to really attack the free agency period. So that makes sense. There is no viable reason that Richmond internally need to be bad or want to be bad or can get away with being bad is the most important one. They're not going to make finals, I don't think, as we sit here right now. Things can change. At their absolute best, can Adam Uze do an Adam Kingsley style year and get them into the eight? It is possible. But if we're doing the old fake dollar bet theory, which is if you had a dollar that you had to bet on it no matter what, I'm not picking Richmond for my eight. I'm not having them potentially finishing last or bottom two though. Because that would be pretty ridiculous. But it's going to be interesting to see what they do. Can they pull out any other moves apart from getting in Jacob Kaczynski? Who knows? What they do in the draft is going to be super interesting for mine because they only got the one top 30 pick and they're going to have to use that wisely. When they had the, the five top 30 picks from a couple of years ago, we've only really seen a bit of Gibkiss, who is a massive tick. Judson Clark and Tyler Sonzi still improving. Young players haven't seen a whole lot of Sam Banks, yes, we got him in the back end of last year. But in terms of that 30, 40 games, they're not there yet either. They aren't for Tom Brown as well. Who I can't actually remember if we've seen at senior level or not. Maybe he's played a game, I'm not sure. But I don't think they're going to be good, the Tigers. But this bottom and bottom two thing for me, I don't buy at all. But what do you guys think? Comment below. Let me know. We are so close to 2,000 subscribers, guys. If you could go ahead and do that, that would mean the absolute world to me. Trying to get to 2K before draft day. It's been a manic trade period, manic draft, pick swapping process. It's madness and I need it to end quickly. But I hope you're having a fantastic week. Video out a day later than I wanted, but it's assessments week at work and... My God, this office is going to become my tomb. But I hope you have a good one. I hope the weekend goes well. I can't wait to see you for next week's slate of videos. Stay wonderful, my friends, and I'll see you later.